Hello and welcome to the showcase of the virtual brain. We will see today how one can simulate stroke within our simulation platform. So far there are two publications on this topic. One called Functional Mechanisms of Recovery after Stroke and the other one the Virtual Brain Modeling Biological Correlates of Recovery after Chronic Stroke. What the authors in those articles did, they scanned in this case 20 individuals with stroke and 11 healthy control subjects. What they did is they calculated the structural connectivity, so the connection between brain regions and niche of the subjects, uploaded this connectivity into the virtual brain simulator and simulated both, um, both activity. They then progressed to simulate many different parameter combinations, so they did huge parameter space explorations and finally they used those the best fitting parameters for each subject and looked for a relation between them and behavioral data. So here in figure 3 we can see one parameter space exploration along the axis conduction velocity and global coupling for a healthy subject on the left and a stroke subject on the right. So we will now have a look at how this can be done with connectivity of our own in the TVB user interface. Here we are on the connectivity viewer page of TVB. <clears throat> what you can see on the right is the connectivity matrix with rows and columns representing brain regions and the color indicating the connection strengths between them. On the left side you can see the cortical surface and the 3D representation of our network model. So you can see there's a lesion in this cortical surface and if you are going into detail you can see mainly see three regions <coughs> affected by this lesion is the inferior temporal, the uh, supramarginal and the postcentral cortex. So let's have a look at only their connections. We will just select those regions in our right on the right side and hide all the other connections. So the remaining edges in this network on the left side are the connections between those three regions and the rest of the network. Let's assume that this stroke destroys every connection between them. We can uh, approximate this by just setting all the, wages, the weights from our connectivity matrix down to zero. So you see those regions turn black and if we show, show all connections and there is no connection between those three and the rest of the network. So we would save this manipulated connectivity, call it stroke, <coughs> and press the save button up here. So I have already done this and created some simulations. Let's have a look at them. Therefore, we switch to the simulator page of the virtual brain. This is where you can adjust your simulation to your needs. So here you set all the different parameters and connectivities you want. First, you would have to choose a connectivity, we just the one we just manipulated. And if you remember back to the article, they were exploring along conduction velocity one axis and global coupling on the other. <clears throat> so we, if we want to do the same, we can do this here, where this parameter A is really just a scaling factor for the wages, uh, edge weights, and uh, the same as global coupling. So we're here um, uh, exploring from a range from 0.01 to 0.2, step, step size of 0.01, and also conduction velocity in a step size of 40 from 20 to 100. We also choose this same local model as in the article uh, called the Stefanesco GSA 3D model. And so these different parameter combinations together make up 57 different simulations and which are displayed on the right side in a um, discrete grid. So each point in this grid represents one simulation. And we will choose the same color metric as in the article which is the global variance. <clears throat> we have to press the refresh button so you can see the colors have changed. Now if we want to see the activity of one um, simulations you have to click on this point and choose visualize a time series visualizer. What you can see here is the neural signal generated by our simulation. Another way to to look at uh, results is to use the continuous um, viewer where values in between our grid points will be interpolated. So 
So we want to choose the same metric again. Global variance. And here we go. We can see how global variance changes as we choose different parameters for our simulation. Now, the heat map we can see here is different to the one in the article, but this is mainly due to different uh, structural connectivity. So we're not using the exact same structural connectivity as in the article. So in the article, they also simulated bolt activity, as you can see here, and computed a functional connectivity from this simulate bolt activity. Therefore, we have a look as well. So we also generated a time series of bolt activity, which you can see here. Bolt activity in this case means a convolution of the neural signal with the hemodynamic response function. And due to this convolution and the kernel length of 20 seconds, you can see the steep gradient at the beginning of the simulation. But after this, after those 20 seconds, you can see the normal slow oscillations of the fMRI signal. And if we want to compute the functional connectivity of this bolt, simulated bolt signal, we select this time series again, choose analyzers, and here's the Pearson correlation coefficient, press on it, and here we have the result, which is the functional connectivity matrix. Due to different color scale, the, the matrix looks a little bit different than in the article, but it's basically the same. So as I said, they here are shown the different parameter space explorations for different parameters, so not only global coupling and conduction velocity, but also variables of the local model called K12, 21, and 11, which are the connection strengths between inhibitory and excitatory subpopulations. And as I said, in the end, they correlated the best fitting parameters for each patient with their uh, behavior data. For example, here, those scores in those motor assessment tests and they saw, for example, global coupling would correlate positively with the score in K12 negatively. And this is how a prognostic or a prognosis can be made on the outcome after stroke in the virtual brain. Thank you for listening and I hope this was informative for you. Thank you and goodbye.